Hi, everybody. Welcome to Bagrass Missionary Baptist Church for our midday study of our Sunday school lesson. We're glad that you're here with us. You could have chosen to be doing something else, but you chose to sit down and hear the word of God. And we thank you for doing that. We have much to be thankful for each and every day. For the water we drink, for the ability to see, to be able to walk back and forth. Just some of the things that God has granted unto us. And we're going to learn about God granting unto the Ethiopian salvation. Nothing better. So first, let us have prayer, and then we'll get into our lesson. We give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, for allowing us to come this day to study your word. Your word is perfect. There is not an error within it. It is righteous and wonderful, and we're happy to be part of it, to be able to say, this is my God, and he's the one who leads me. We know, Heavenly Father, that you're with us all this day. You're with those that are sick, those that are bereaved, those that are worried and troubles. Let them take them to you and leave them there with you. We pray for Brother Dave Dow and Sister Jean. We pray for Sister Clayton. We pray for the Gazaway family. And we pray for those that we may not know by name, but you do. You have blessed Beargrass greatly, Heavenly Father, in so many ways. We may be small in structure, but we're large in respect and love for you. Thank you, Lord, for it. And we pray and ask these things in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ's name. And ask you to bless the pastor that he may conduct the work that you've given him to do. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Our lesson comes today from the book of Acts, chapter 8, verse 26 through 40. I'm sorry, 29 through 40. And it's entitled, An Ethiopian is Baptized. But the first place I want us to go to is I want you to take your Bibles and go with me to a very familiar passage. If you go with me with, to the passage of Matthew chapter 28, verses 18. Well, let's just do this one verse, because this one verse is the one that's important. Verse 19. Matthew chapter 28, verse number 19, which you know very well yourself. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, Baptize them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. We could summarize our whole lesson in just those few verses, because he is with us. Christ is with us. And he says, even to the end of the world. Now, he gave some commands in that those verses. And one command was this. Baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. And we will see in our lesson here that the, the Ethiopian is about to be baptized in the name of the Lord. But first, we have to think about this. He had to be in the right place. Philip had to be in the right place to baptize him. And we have to be in the right place to hear the word of God. And that's wonderful to know. So seeing the, that as a key part of our lesson, let's go back and think about what Jesus was doing. He was allowing his word to spread even after he had ascended back into heaven. He had chose 12 disciples, one distracted, one taken out to 11, that they may go about teaching his word and preaching and letting them know that he is with us always. How wonderful it is to know that. Now, it's true that it's true that I like to use a variety of verses to complement a lesson, and I will do so even at this time. If you would please, as I said earlier, go to our lesson an Ethiopian is baptized. 
starting with verse number 29. Then the Spirit said to Philip, Go near and join thyself to the ch his chariot. And Philip ran hither and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understand that which thou readest? The Ethiopian was riding back to Ethiopia after being in Jerusalem to worship. And he had co a copy of the book of Isaiah. And he was trying to read it. He wanted to know what it meant. It touched his heart. And he wanted to know as much as he could about it. So he asked Philip, who ran up to his chariot, if he could t interpret for him and let him know. Many times we need to know more about Christ, and we have to ask those that have studied his word more thoroughly to interpret for us. When I use the word interpret, I should say to make it clear, not interpret, to make it clear. And we see here that he asked this man, Philip, whom he never met before, what does this mean? Who is he writing about in this book of Isaiah, chapter 53? Who is he writing about? And let's see what Philip's reply is. Let's go on to verse number 31. And he said, How can I accept some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. The Ethiopian had a nice chariot. Back in those days, it was a person of wealth that could afford that. And he invited Philip to come up and be in the chariot with him as he tried to find out more about what Philip had knew about Isaiah 53. We read Isaiah 53 quite often ourselves, and it is comforting to us to know what it means. And it would be comforting to the Egyptian also. But, I'm sorry, the, the Philippian... to the Ethiopian also. Mom got a thing up there. It would be comfort to him, but in order for something to be comforting to you, it has to be something that lasts, something that will remain, not just something that will just be there for shortly. So let's see what he tells the Ethiopian as we go on into our verses. The place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a lamb, as a sheep, to the slaughter. And like a lamb that is dumb before his shearer, so he opened not his mouth. In his humiliation, and I want to get to that word, I had to stop right there and put the brakes on it, because humiliation is exactly what Jesus received. He received humiliation, and he did not pout about it, he did not cry about it, he took it. Take your Bibles with me and go back with me to Isaiah. Go back to Isaiah with me, chapter 50. Chapter 50 of Isaiah. If you look at Isaiah chapter 50, in verse number oh, 6, that's as good a place to start as any. And it's describing what Jesus went through for us. It says here, And I gave my back to the smiters, and my cheeks to them that plucked off the hair. I hid not my face from the shame and the spitting. And the Lord God will help me. Therefore shall I not be confounded. Therefore I have set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be ashamed. He took all those for us. He took the beating. He took the spitting on him. He took all those things. And he took what was a word called reproach. I mean, them cursing him out. He took all that because he was Christ, the Son of God, and he had come to save us. And that's wonderful to know. So we see here that 
Philip turns to the scripture, or he takes the scripture that the Ethiopian had chosen and started to interpret to him who it was. And the Ethiopian wanted to know that. He wanted to know this. Who is it that took all this? Who, all, who is this that took all this pain and suffering for us? And what does it mean? You know, how do I fit in this picture? And that's wonderful to know also. Now, a little bit more background information we need to get about Philip is this. There are two Philips in the New Testament. There's Philip the Apostle, one of Jesus' apostles, and then the Philip that we're reading about today, Philip the Evangelist. We know evangelist is some person travels and gives the good news out to people. And this is the Philip that we're studying today, Philip the Evangelist, who we see here is helping the Ethiopian to be more and more essentially to know Christ. And that's wonderful for us. Um, I quote quite often, I tell people quite often about Reverend Charles Stanley. Reverend Stanley passed away a couple of weeks ago, but the work that he did is work that will stay with us for a long, long time if we will read it and open our hearts and minds to it. That's what Philip was trying to do to the Ethiopian, to open up his heart and mind to know who Christ was and what Christ had done for us. That is wonderful to know. Now, when Jesus took all these pains and sufferings, there was one thing that he didn't count on that he had to take also, and that was all the sins of all the people in the world were piled upon his shoulders. We can't handle our own sin, not to mention the sins of the whole world, but that's what the Father put on Jesus so that we may be forgiven. How wonderful it is to know that. So there's so much here in this lesson, brothers and sisters, that we can read and learn from that I hope that you will take your Bibles at home and read and learn from it. And also ask someone that knows. Talk with them. Because if they know and they're willing to share it with you, that is a true sign of a Christian person that wants you to know the word of God. Getting back to the verses. Verse number 34. And the unit answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh this prophet this? Is it himself or some other man? And he says he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we were healed. He wants to know, we want to know who they're talking about. Who's going to suffer all this? It is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Verse 35. Then Philip opened his mouth and began to, at the same scripture, began preached unto them him Jesus. He preached unto him Jesus because the Ethiopian was going to go back to his country and they're going to say, how did your trip go? What did you learn? And he wanted to be able to tell them about Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior and how one person will tell another and then another and another that we may know Christ as our Lord and Savior. Sometimes we're misled by others that will try to tell us other things and make them seem like they're essential and great significance when they're not. But we know that the word of the Lord is more than great and wonderful. It is more than essential. It is life-giving if we would listen to it. So we see here that Philip is keeping the command that was given over in Matthew 28, verse 19. All the world. And we see him on the road between Jerusalem and what's known as Gaza. We know of the Gaza Strip now. If we were to look at the geography of Israel and the geography of the area. Philip was doing the job that the Christ had told him to do. And this is something I always like to point out. When the Holy Spirit speaks to you, 
Do you listen? Do you obey? What are the results? There are always good results if we listen and obey. Philip wanted the Ethiopian to listen and to obey what he was learning. Because there was probably going to be the last chance that he would have the chance to see the Ethiopian. But we will find Philip a little bit later on in a lesson. And as they went on their way, they came to a certain water. And the eunuch said, see, here is water. What does hinder me from being baptized? Philip had told him about it was essential to be baptized. And the Ethiopian took it to heart. And they came to a place where there may have been a, maybe a stream, it may have been just a creek, but there was enough water that he knew that he could be baptized there. And he says, what is there to keep me from being baptized? He wanted to be baptized. He wanted Christ to be his Lord and Savior. As I said, we should also. And Philip said, verse 37, if thou believe with thy heart, Thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That is another mouthful there. He says, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So therefore, if he is the Son of God, it means that all things, all power is given to him in heaven and earth, and that he can help this Ethiopian. As we know geographically, Ethiopia is to the east of Israel. And we also know that they practice a Christianity there, which I cannot speak upon, but I know they practice a Christianity of faith there in Ethiopia. In fact, they say that they claim that they have some of the articles that belong to Christ there. And he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water both Philip and the Ethiopian, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. Have you ever been to a baptism in, baptism in a stream where there was water? I remember it used to be that Reverend Elliot used to have one every year after revival in the West End. And they would go down to the Ohio River, and he would go in as well as the person who was being baptized. Take me to the water. Take me to the water to be baptized. We are to be baptized in water, whether it be in a pool, whether it be in a stream, whether it be just in a small creek. We're to baptize to let people know who we belong to and how he has washed away our sins. And when they were come out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip that the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. Who went on their way rejoicing? The Ethiopian. Who else went on the way rejoicing? Philip, because he had done something what the Lord had told him to do, to baptize this Ethiopian. And this Ethiopian was rejoicing because he had been obedient to what was taught to him there. How much do we gain when we're obedient to the word of God? How much to know and realize, regardless of where we are, who we're with, that we're Christ's child, that we are one of his army, and that we are the ones that have bowed, and not only bowed, we've also called others to know Christ as our Lord and Savior. Now, getting on to the last verse. But Philip was found at Azus, and passing through the preached in the cities until he came to Caesarea. And that will be the last time that we'll hear of, of Philip when he comes to Caesarea because he ends up staying there. If we, will you take your bowels and go with me, please, to uh, Acts chapter 20, I think, verse number 6. Acts chapter 20, verse number 6. It's Acts chapter 21, verse number 
And the next day, were of Paul's company departed and came into Caesarea. We entered into the house of Philip, the evangelist, which was one of seven, abode with him. We see that it puts on the end that Philip was an evangelist. And they went to his house to spread the word of God that others may know also. Now, one more scripture I'll have us go back to, if you would please. Go back to Matthew chapter 10 for me, please. Ed Keith Williams, he skips around everywhere. But there's so much here. So much here that for us to know. And so much for us to be able to study on our own also. Matthew chapter 10. When we're watching soap operas, when we're watching Dancing with the Stars, when we're watching other things that are going on in television, places like that, we don't hesitate to watch them. We watch them intently. It should be the same thing with the Word of God. Intently, we should study it. Starting with verse number 2 rather than verse number 3. 10th chapter of Matthew, verse number 3. I'm sorry, verse number 2. Now the names of the 12 apostles are these. The first is Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew his brother, and James the son of Zebedee, and John his brother, Philip, and Bartholomew, Thomas, and Matthew, the publican, James the son of Alphaeus, and of the band whose surname is Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. This relates to us the first Philip, not the evangelist, but the Philip that was one of the disciples. So I give you this so that you would be able to, to discern, discern. And also, when other people talk about one Philip, you can tell them, no, there are two. There's the one in the book of Acts, is the one that's in Matthew. But they were both doing what? Spreading the gospel around. Telling everybody how wonderful it is to know Jesus and to love him. Now, I'm closing off with this lesson by saying this. There are many times when people will mislead you in the word of God. Some do it by error. Some do it on purpose. Some do it out of not knowing. But the important thing for us to do is to know ourselves. And the only way for us to know ourselves is to pick up the book and read it and to study it and to study passages that are related to it so that we may know that Christ is our Savior and he's the one that came that we may be saved. He came down out of his royal place to put on human form to take our sins away. How wonderful it is to know that. I've been to the river to be baptized. What wonderful thing it is to know and how we're able to share that with others. We have skipped over from our previous lessons to this new lesson in chapter 8. But you know what? You're not losing anything we gain when you study the Word of God. So thank you for coming to study the Word of God this day. Thank you to Sister Christina for her diligence in getting the electronics together for us. Thanks for Brother Craig for his steadfastness working to do so many different jobs in the church. But there's a reward for each and every one of us. Each and every day, Christ rewards us. And the only thing we can say is, bless you, Heavenly Father, and thank you. Thank you for joining us, and let us close in prayer. You told your disciples to go everywhere, spreading your gospel. And we see that Philip was committed to doing that. And the Ethiopian was committed to hearing your word and to take it to his heart. Heavenly Father, 
you're the one and you're only that have woken us to the truth that we may share with others. We don't do it in boastfulness. We don't do it in pride. We don't do it in arrogance. We do it humbly. We say, you are God, and there's no one like you, and that you are our Lord and Savior. How wonderful it is to know. We pray, Heavenly Father, for every member of Beargrass Missionary Baptist Church, present and non-present. We pray for those who have moved to other locations, and we ask, Heavenly Father, that you will allow us to come and worship you in fullness of a heart. We thank you for Women's Day this past Sunday. What a wonderful service it was. And we look forward to many more Sundays to worship you if you will allow. We pray and ask these things because Christ is the Son of God and it's him that we put our trust in. And our God is the only God and the Holy Spirit gives us the wisdom to know. Bless you, Lord. And we pray in Christ's name. Amen. And thank you so much for joining us this day in the state of the word. And Ethiopian is baptized. Thank you.